Good morning. We are looking at section 13.3. This is solving the equilibrium problems. This is one of the harder sections of chapter 13. So be prepared to pause a lot and copy stuff down and make sense of what it is that you're doing as you go along. Here's your reaction. Uh, equilibrium constant 5.10. Calculate the equilibrium concentration of all species. And it's initially we have one mole of each of the components is mixed in a one liter flask. So I usually start these questions. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than where I'm going for the traditional style of solving these, but it is definitely something that could show up on a test or an AP test. This one's uh, we have the initial conditions where we actually have some of the products actually placed inside of the flask too. remember one liter flask means that if you put one mole of something in there, you've got one molar of that. So we got one molar, one molar, one molar, and one molar. And we wanna know what direction is equilibrium gonna go so that we can find out what the equilibrium concentrations are. So I'm gonna take these values and I'm gonna put them into the KEQ, which is just simply, you know, I guess I, maybe I should have started with that somewhere here. Let's put that right up here. K is equal to carbon dioxide times hydrogen divided by carbon monoxide times water all to the first power. So I don't need to write that down again down here. Let's just go straight into putting the numbers for what we have initially. Um, also, I know that this is equal to 5.10. So I've got one times one over one times one, which equals one. One is less than 5.10, which means that our numerator is not big enough and our denominator is uh, too big. So therefore we need a reaction that's going to take away some of our denominator, our reactants, and turn it more into products. So I need to subtract X amount of each of these. Since they're in a one-to-one -one ratio, if I lose X amount of carbon monoxide, I lose X amount of water, and I gain X amount of carbon dioxide, and I gain X amount of hydrogen. So my equilibrium con concentrations are one minus X, one minus X, one plus X, and one plus X. Don't forget to pause along the way if there's things that don't make sense to you because this is, a, this is something that takes a little bit to ingest all of this. I'm gonna write my K expression with those values. 5.10 equals one minus X. Nope, nope, I wrote that backward. Products over reactants. One plus X times one plus X over one minus x times one minus x. Okay, that then I can rewrite this uh, right side of the equation as one plus x squared over one minus x squared equals 5.10. Then here's where we start getting into some math rules. I'm going to square root both sides. When I do that, that gives me one plus x over one minus x equals root 510. Then treating this like it's a proportion, cross multiply and divide maybe. Basically at this point, what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve for the X, right? So I'm gonna let you work on your math skills to be able to pull that off. Um, okay, we already did that part. You can see all of the work that I did here. I did square root the 5.10 and then distribute the 2.25 into both of those terms, then bring all the X's to one side, all of the numbers to the other side to solve for X. Me personally, I use a graphing calculator or I use something like Desmos and graph the function and then look for where it has a, um, an, an x-intercept to find these answers. Um, something that we might need to talk together about in Zoom. Anyway, plug all those in and we can see the adjustments here. These all decrease, these two decrease down to 0.6. These two increase to uh, 1.39, 1.4. Okay. Remember, pause this as you go, because there's things here that are going to be kind of difficult, especially the math. Question number two, the reaction between hydrogen gas and fluorine gas produces gaseous hydrogen fluoride. At a certain temperature, the equilibrium constant is 1.15 times 10 to, the, 10 to the second power. In a particular experiment, three moles are added to a 1.5 liter flask. Okay, so we take each of the two reactants. This is a 1.5 liter flask. If you've got three moles of a substance in there, three divided by 1.5 is how I got the twos. So two and two and zero. Now, 
This reaction has no choice but to proceed towards products. So we're going to lose X amount of hydrogen. And since it's in a one-to-one -one ratio, we're going to lose X amount of iodine. And since they're in a one-to-one -to, -one to two ratio with the hydrogen iodide, we're going to gain 2X amount of the hydrogen iodide. Make sure that makes sense. So in my KEQ expression, I can say that one, if I move the decimal over two places, that just becomes 115. 115 equals 2x squared divided by 2 minus x times 2 minus x. Once again, I'm going over these very quickly because I can't. You are supposed to pause these and then do the math and see if you're working out the same way that I'm working things out. This one still, we have the same denominator, so I would just square root both sides. That gets rid of the squaring, and we have just 2x over 2 minus x equals root 115, whatever that is. And then same thing. It's just now make it into a proportion, cross, multiply, and divide. Gather your x's on one side, gather your numbers on the other side, and we can do that together in class. Once you have what x equals 0.6, 971. Then I'm going to subtract that from 2 to get my hydrogen and iodine concentrations at equilibrium. And I'm going to double that number to get my hydrogen iodide concentration at equilibrium. Last example. Gaseous hydrogen iodide is synthesized from hydrogen gas and iodine vapor at a temperature at a temperature at iodine vapor. Sorry, I'm too busy going, why are we doing the same thing? Because now they're talking about pressures. Where the equilibrium constant is basically 100, right? So we can just say that the Kp equals 100 for this one. Here's the pressures that we have, and we're mixing them into a 5-liter flask. It, we wouldn't divide this time, right? Because if you're in a 5-liter flask and they're telling you those are the pressures of the gases that are there, then we don't have to go through and do a... a uh, pressure divided by volume thing, right? It's not like moles divided by volume to find molarity. This is the pressure inside that container because the container is that size. Okay, so we are synthesizing it, which means I want to say that H2 reacts with I2 to form HI, two of them. Ah, two in the I on the wrong sides. Try that again. Two HI. And then uh, they already are giving us what's going on at equilibrium. Or no, 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 let's not call it equilibrium. They're telling us what they did at the very start, right? So I'm still going to go with initial. It's just that we actually do start out with, uh, with all substances having a pressure. So we've got um, 0 0.01, 0 0.005, and 0.5 atmospheres. Now, I recognize that there's going to be a shift, but I don't know which way, so I'm going to have to start by doing Q. Q equals, maybe also we want to see the actual equilibrium expression. Uh, so Kp equals pressure for the hydrogen iodide squared divided by pressure for the hydrogen times pressure for the iodide. There we go. So now my Q expression looks exactly the same but I'm going to put in my values. 0.5 squared divided by 0.01 and divided by 0.005. And this is going to tell me which way to shift my equilibrium. Let's cheat to the next slide. Uh, I got 5,000 when I solved this. So if I get 5,000, which is much greater than 100, that tells me my numerator is too big and my denominator is too small. So I need to have this reaction shift back towards the reactant side, shift to the left. And so my equilibrium is going to be. Now you got to decide what you want to have as your x, because if you put 0.5 minus x, then that means you've got to say 0.01 plus a uh, half of an x and 0.005 plus a half of an x. And it'll still work. Mathematically, the equations, the functions will still equal each other. But that doesn't seem like a good idea. That's probably why it would be better to include a, uh, a change in this one. So I'm sorry. I know you probably already wrote that down. I'm just going to include a change, see if you can squeeze it in there. So if we know it's going to shift to the reactants, let's say that we're going to go plus x, plus x, and minus 2x. And that way we can avoid the minus x and plus half x and plus half x. It'll still work. 
It just will be more confusing with the map. Desmos won't care, but you might, especially for writing it down. So 0 0.01 plus x, 0 0.005 plus x, and 0.5 minus 2x. Ugh, that looks like complicated math. Thank goodness for calculators. So now I'm going to say that my kp, which equals 100, is equal to 0.5 minus 2x squared over 0.01 plus x and 0.005 plus x. This is a much harder problem than the ones we just saw because you can't just square root both sides. Because the problem is, is this denominator doesn't have the same two uh, factors. So we can't combine them together and say 0.01 plus x squared, right? We're stuck with this might have to be foiled or something like that. That's crazy talk. This is crazy talk. Only a math class would waste their time solving something like this. This is why we have Desmos, because Desmos, if you turn this into a function on Desmos, if you call it, you know, on Desmos, if you remember this, y1 equals, and then you just type it in like you see it. And the nice thing about Desmos is it will show you, if you've typed it incorrectly, that if you put it in like this, this represents a function. And this function can be graphed minus 100, right? So all I did is subtracted 100 to the other side and then called this y equals what's there. And then what I'm going to do on Desmos is I'm going to look to see what the graph is doing. I don't know. I mean, I've taught math plenty of times, but I still can't look at a function like this and say what, it, what the function's doing. So let's just pretend that the function does this, right? Well, x can't be a negative value because x is an amount. So what we do is we just run the trace until we get to this point right here and find that x-intercept. And whatever that value is, that's what x equals. Okay, then we're going to add that to 0.01 and add that to 0.005 and subtract that like that says. I bet I didn't even solve it. Like I said, capital letters Desmos. I wouldn't count on that on an AP test. I would count on more likely write the expression. And did I put the expression upside down? I did. This is, no, I, I did. It's upside down, right? Because this is supposed to be 0.5 minus 2. Good thing that I'm working these out. Because if you're looking at this online, this is upside down. Don't make mistakes like that. So those cost you points. They don't cost me anything, but they cost you points. So you can't afford that. Okay? Um, I did put it incorrectly up here, though. So I knew the correct KP. I just, for some reason, wrote it in upside down there. All right, chapter 13, homework number three. Practice using your Desmos, because just because the AP test might not do that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do it to you, especially if you're taking this test at home. I can put these on a test and expect that you can get an answer. So please practice it, and we'll do it together in class when we meet. All right, have a good one.